series. The basis of the thermal series is that all functions of practical significance, which are defined between minus pi and positive pi, yes, so that x carries or variable value between minus pi and pi to be expressed in terms of a convergent trigonometric series of a form. Function of x is equal to a zero. That's the a, a zero is the DC shift that we looked at last week, and then a, a series of cosine terms all added together with coefficients a one, a two, a three, and so on in front of them, followed by a series of sine terms with b one, b two, b three, and so on in front. Of them. Where a zero, a one, a two, b one, b two being three, are real constants. I.e., what we're saying here is, last week we looked at what was, what was meant by fundamental frequency, second, third, and fourth harmonics. Yeah. So, in terms of this, a one cos x plus b one sine x is the fundamental frequency. If you look at the second one, a2 cos 2x, so that's double the frequency, and sine 2x, double the frequency, therefore, that's the second harmonic. Three times the frequency, third harmonic, n times the frequency, of the nth harmonic. Yep. So if your base frequency, Dan, you weren't here last week, base frequency was 50 hertz, that's the fundamental, the overall frequency, the the, the lowest frequency in the in the range. Then its second harmonic would be 100. Its third harmonic would be 150 hertz. Fourth harmonic, 200, and so on. Yep. That's correct. So. This can be written as what's called the infinite series. So we've got function of x is equal to IO, the DC shift. So all IO does is shift the whole waveform up or down the x, the, the y axis. Plus, and this sign capital sigma means add up all of these values of n between 1 and infinity. In infinite series. Right. Where for the range of minus pi to pi, this is how we find out what these constants are. So for a0, we take 1 over 2 pi and then we integrate the function between pi and minus pi to find a n, 1 over pi, integrate between minus pi and pi of the cosine and to find Bn 1 over pi sine nx. Yeah. A0, An and Bn are called the Fourier coefficients. So all, all those that you find are Fourier coefficients. Alright? All, all not too bad so far. And you all remember, hopefully, how you can integrate those terms, or you, hopefully you've got your little proof sheet. Last year, you two have definitely got yours. You will want them shortly. Okay. So what we're going to look at is going to keep it fairly simple in the first example. So we're going to obtain the first three terms of the Fourier series for the following square wave function. <laughs> Alright? So, what you find with this Fourier series is, depending on um, what the function is like, you can end up with how many only cosine terms. 
end up with just the second half, just odd or even harmonics. If you remember from last week, things that were here, the square wave is built up from odd harmonics only. I don't want to preempt that because here we're going to prove that there are no second harmonics. There is here. Right. We've, got, we've got this wave up here, start at minus pi, it goes negative. To the minus one absolute value. Uh, zero switches to positive one, and it picks up the value and drops back to zero. So that could be a repeat square wave of average one. Yeah, here we go, two pi. For the, for the values of X that we got. But all of this can be X. Value is different. I am in a minute. So, print the amount in your. Expanded that to one over two pi and put a set of brackets because we've got to integrate minus one. The function is worth minus one between minus pi and zero. That's this red bit here, and it's worth plus one between that bit there and then.
Yes. What you're saying is you could write that minus one as minus one x to the zero. Yeah. And then integrating means you add one to that, so that becomes x to the one, and you divide by the new index. So your quote rate that becomes minus one dx. What about when you integrate? Number one. So that's the integration. Well, you got one of two eight eight seven six. You got the two eight eight added together. That's for the One of the two pi applied to all of it. All right, and then we have to expand these two. Definite integral results are definite, definite integral days, don't we? We have to put them and put the limits in. So we put um, zero as, as the upper bound, minus pi as the lower bound. So this is um, minus zero is zero, and minus pi times minus one is plus pi. See that? So that those two bits are so the red definite integral. Yes. In here is minus minus x. Yeah. And x is minus pi. So what you've got in there, Kieran, is minus x times x, times minus, yeah, which makes a positive, yeah, all right, all of you, yeah, and then in this one, we've got pi minus zero, so that's pi, all right, that expands out to, if we say we've got one other two pi here, and we've got minus pi plus pi in here. So that everything in there turns out as zero, therefore plane or zero. And if you look at it, have we got a DC shift? Now we're sitting on that change of a point sitting on the zero axis. If we had a to give us a D, DC shift we'd we'd have something like this. Well it was bigger above the zero axis than it is below. Yep. Or we could be down the other way. That would give us a positive A zero. If that was the other way round, a long bit here and a short bit there, it'd give us a negative A zero. All follow? Yeah. Are you talking about here? There? Let's just, let's just take one of those out on a new page a minute. Just, uh, so we, I'm just going to take the square brackets bit, Callum. Yeah? And I'll do the negative one. So we've got a square bracket integral that says minus x. So we've done the integration, and the limits are minus pi and zero. Yeah? All right, so we've done the integration, but we don't include the plus c, because when you do definite integrals, they cancel out anyway. Remember that? OK. So then what we have to do is expand that out. The result of that is the value of this minus x 
when um, the, another set of brackets, the value of that when x is zero, so it's minus zero, take away the value when the lower bound is in. So that's minus minus pi. Yeah? Do you remember doing that now? And I kind of maybe missed a step out there and gone all the way to the end. Yeah? And then, and then, because in our example there, we, we've got another, we've got a second integral, haven't we, that we're adding the two together. All right? But do you, you remember that now, do you? Yeah. All right? But there's always the value at the upper bound, the one on the number on the top, take away the value at the lower bound. Yeah? All right? So there is no DC term. Yeah? Right. Now what we do is we take a look at the A to the power of N terms. Okay? So, A to the N is 1 over 2 pi of the integral between minus pi and plus pi of the function times cos NX DX. Often becomes apparent that there's a pattern to the coefficient values. For example, only odd or only even have values. So we'll look out for that. Once we can see a definite pattern, we then just make that assumption that's going to follow that pattern. All right. So we're going to try, first of all, to see what A1 is, that n equal 1. So we're going to integrate um, the function of the, multiplied by the cosine of nx. So again, we've got to separate the two conditions of the discontinuity. So again, we'll colour this in in red. And that's the um, integral for the red part. We'll colour this in in, green, in blue. And that's the integral for the blue part. So it's minus 1 cos x on that side times dx. And it's plus 1 cos x on the other side times dx. When we integrate minus 1 cos x, what do we get? Make sure you're on the integration side of your crib sheet. Integrate cos x dx. You get 1 over a sine x. Sine a x. Yeah? And that's, so, if we integrate that, the minus one in front, a in this case is no, is no number in front of x, so a, a is nothing, so that becomes minus one. A, a is effectively one, sorry, so it's minus one over one sine x, minus one sine x. This one becomes plus one times sine x between pi and zero, that, one, that side, and that side between that's minus pi and zero. Evaluating that, so multiply. The sine is zero. 
minus sine of that pi plus sine of that minus the sine of zero. This when it's worthwhile knowing what your values of uh, signs of important angles are. Sign of zero is then sign of zero is yeah, so minus sign of zero is. Zero. So that bit's worth zero. Sine of minor is zero. Pi is zero. Sine of zero is they're all none. A one is not. So there's no A one to series. happy so far? Yeah. Integrating, we end up with 1 over pi, and then when we integrate, it's minus 1 times the sine of 2x over 2. Divide by a. a is 2 in this case. And on this side, 1 times sine, one times sine of 2x over 2. Between pi and 0, so that's the blue bit. The function. That's the red bit. If I did. Yeah. Hopefully you're all following. Yeah. We then expand that out. Minus sine zero over two. Well, minus sine zero we already said was zero. So zero over two is. Zero. Sine of minus two pi. Zero. Sine of two pi. Zero. Sine of zero. So again, all those terms are zero. Therefore, the whole lot is equal to zero, and there is no A2 term. Right, look where N has turned up. That N is equal to underneath the rules. That hasn't made any difference to the result. It should be apparent that whatever the value of N, we're going to end up with the same top lines. Yeah, because 3 um, minus 3 pi, sine minus 3 pi is 0. Sine, sine 3 pi is 0. 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi. Whatever we make n, we're going to end up with a result of 0. Which means, this means, there are no cosine terms in the Fourier series. Yeah, so we don't need to check A constants anymore. Yeah. 
Okay? You all happy? There are no cosine terms. We check both odd and even. They both come out as zero. It's going to stay that way. All right? Can I move on? Right. So, now try, we'll attempt to determine the B to the N terms. Let's try when N is 1. So this time, we're multiplying the sine of NX by the function to get the um, integrals. We'll do the red and blue as before. So there's the red half. That's the, that's the integral for that. There's the blue graph. That's the integral for that. So, what do we do when we want to integrate sine x? What, what's the result of integrating sine x? Minus cos x. Minus 1 over a. I in this case is 1 anyway. So, we end up with minus 1 times minus cos x means we end up with a 1 cos x on that side and minus cos x on this side. Yep. Okay. When we expand that out, get that. The one of a pi is outside the brackets. We've got the cosine of zero, take away the cosine of minus pi. And I have that cosine of minus pi, take away the cosine of zero. Yeah. Cosine of zero is. That's the sine function. The cosine function starts at 1. Yeah? That's sine. That's cos. So the cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of minus pi is... Minus 1. Cosine of minus cos pi. Cosine of minus cos zero. One minus minus one plus one minus minus one. What are that all equal? One minus minus one is two plus one minus minus one is four. So B one is four of a pi. Because we've got to multiply what's in there by one of a pi. Like that. So we got our first coefficient. Our first term in the Fourier series will be 4 of a pi sine x. Yep, so that's going to be our first term of the three we're looking for in the Fourier series.
Right, so let's have a look when n is 2. Again, red, blue, so our two integrals, blue bit, red bit, integrates 2, so the 2 comes underneath. Yeah, so we've got one, over, 1 cos 2x over 2 minus cos 2x over 2. Yeah, again, red part, blue part, added together because of the discontinuity. If we then expand that out. We said cos of 0 was 1, cos of minus 2 pi is one full circle 2 pi, so it must be the same as the cos of 0. Cos of minus the cos of 2 pi, minus 1, minus the cos of 0 minus 1. So we end up with that. A half, take away a half, there's nothing. Plus minus a half, minus, minus a half. We end up with B2 is equal to 0. So there's no second harmonic term. And again, if we look at these terms on the top here, if um, n becomes 4, 6, or 8, any even term, they're all going to cancel out and end up with 0. Yeah, because cosine of 4 pi, cosine of minus 4 pi, cosine of 6 pi, cosine of minus 6 pi, etc., all evaluate to 1 for all even values of n, so they're all going to cancel each other out. So there are, from that we can say, there are no um, even harmonics. any beta beta any number of n that's odd should, this should be b to the two is equal to zero but b to the four equals zero b to the six will also equal zero And we can say that there are, therefore, no even harmonic terms, which is what we discussed last week in the square wave um, synthesis, no even harmonics. Okay, so let's just have a look at um, when n is equal to 3. Lengthy, there we go. Blue, red. So when we integrate those, the value of 3 comes in the top and bottom here. Yeah. See where that come from. Okay, again, red half, blue half. 
bands out to that. Cos zero is one. Cos of minus three pi is minus one. Minus the cos of three pi. is 1, and minus the cos of 0 is minus 1. And we get that. A third minus minus a third is two thirds. Yeah. Plus a third is three thirds. Minus minus a third is four thirds. See what? See it? Yeah. So B3 is 4 over 3 pi. Therefore, second term we're looking for is four over three pi sine three x. Before I open the slide, what's going to happen to what's on that board there when I make N5? Everywhere where there's a 3 on there, so here, 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 and underneath there, all M3s will become a 5. So this bit down the bottom here will become a fifth, minus minus a fifth, plus another fifth, minus minus a fifth. Can you see that that's going to end up with 4 over 5 pi? Yeah? So that's on the next slide. Yeah, I'll go back in a minute. 4 over 5 pi. It should be evident that for odd values of n, b to the n is b is equal to 4 over n times pi. Alright? I'll come back to that in a minute when you have finished what you want to do on that slide. Where do you want it? Near the bottom? In the blue half. We've got minus plus sine kx. We're only looking at b1 because we know there's a b1 from our previous problem. We're only going to get our harmonics. And in fact, if the function will rotate about its midpoint and go over itself, so if you rotate at 180 degrees and it superimpose over itself, you're always going to get um, cos uh, sine terms only. Yeah. So, that becomes integrate minus cos x, expand, we end up with k minus minus k plus k minus minus k, we end up with 4k on the top, where we just had 4 before. So that's where the amplitude comes on that one, yeah? And if you look at the next one, or n is equal to 3, I'm just going to quickly go through this and then you can copy it down if you want to. Right. K is after the 4, so that's K. It should be apparent from this that for a square wave, yeah, with amplitude K, the coefficient for odd values of N are Vn is equal to 4 times the amplitude for N of R. 
Yes. Well, it's seven and four. Four carries. So, on our old friend, testing that out with an amplitude of 25. And that's what we get. We plot that. So we're 25 of a pi for the first term, 25 times 4 of a 3 pi for the second term, 5 times 4 of a 5 pi for the third term, and we could carry that on indefinitely. And as you saw last week, as we add, as we add, as we add more terms, this angle here, these angles here become, these changes here become steeper and the ripple on the top gradually gets higher frequency, lower amplitude as we add more. made up from a various series of sines and sines and cosine terms. Right. So effectively you could go through that maths for a sawtooth wave. Yep. You could do it for triangular. And any other repeating wave shape you care to mention. Right, moving that up and down the axis and so on. All right, we're not going to do that. It's lengthy, and if I was to give you that in the exam, I'd make sure it was cut down somehow by asking you to find certain terms or not and what they were. Okay, and maybe sketching what the waveform looked like. It's too, it's far too lengthy for uh, an exam question in an R and an R long exam. All right. Yeah. But it's important that you see that. But that's where the, that that system comes from. All right. The other interesting thing, and that's still a lengthy process, is you know, like Simpson's rule and um, trapezoidal rule, there is a numerical method for doing Fourier series, and that's quite good because you can do any shape. You know, like Simpson's rule will allow you when you don't even know what the function is to estimate, well this numerical method is similar to, to Simpson's rule in that it will, that, that could be a completely random shape that you haven't got a function for and you can do a Fourier series on it. But again you, know, you have to come up with a big table of values and that's far too lengthy for the exam anyway. Alright, so we'll, we'll finish there today. Yeah, oh you can copy that down, yeah. I'm just gonna, um, Start the, start the 